to show that a sequence converges we have to know its limit or at least guess what and we have seen that this is quite difficult so we came up with some alternate ways to show that a sequence converges one of this was if a sequence is monotone and bounded then it converges another was that if a sequence is cauchy then it is convergent and etc now we will show a similar result for integration we know that to show a function is integrable we have to guess its integral and this is difficult so we will instead have a result and this result is so similar to the cauchy criterion for sequences that this result will also be called the cauchy criterion let f be a function from a b to r then f belongs to r a b if and only if for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists an eta of epsilon such that if p dot and q dot are two tagged partitions such that norm of p dot is less than eta of epsilon and norm of q dot is less than eta of epsilon then mod of s of f p dot minus s of f q dot is less than epsilon Let's now turn to its proof. Now one direction of this theorem is very easy. That is, if f is Riemann integrable, then we can find such an eta of epsilon. In particular, eta of epsilon is nothing but delta of epsilon by 2. So if norm of p dot and norm of q dot are less than uh, delta of epsilon by 2, then what can you say? You can say that S of F P dot minus L is less than epsilon by 2 and S of F Q dot minus L is less than epsilon by 2. So because of this, modulus of S of F P dot minus S of F Q dot is equal to modulus of s of f p dot minus l plus l minus s of f q dot which by triangle inequality is less than or equal to s of f p dot minus l plus modulus of s of f q dot minus l which is less than or equal to epsilon by 2 plus epsilon by 2 that is equal to epsilon and that completes the proof now we have to show the other side that means if the function satisfies the Cauchy criterion then it is indeed indecrable to do this we have to guess a limit that is the first idea so we will construct special partitions and use these special partitions to guess a limit. That's the idea. So what do we do for each n in natural numbers? Let delta n greater than 0 be such that norm of p dot and norm of q dot less than delta n implies that modulus of s of f p dot minus s of f q dot is less than 1 by n okay so we may we may assume here that actually delta n is a decreasing sequence that is delta n is greater than or equal to delta n plus 1 why can we assume this see because if one delta n works every smaller delta n also works so i could have taken the smaller delta n in the next stage that's all so we can always assume that delta n is greater than or equal to delta n plus 1. Okay. 
Now if Pn is a sequence of partitions such that norm of Pn dot is less than delta n implies that the Riemann sums S of F Pn dot is Cauchy which implies that S of F Pn dot is convergent. And let us say A is equal to limit n tends to infinity S of F P n dot. Now notice that if you look at S of F Q dot minus A that is equal to mod of S of F Q dot minus S of F P n plus S of F P n minus A which by triangle inequality is less than or equal to modulus of S of F Q dot minus S of F P n plus modulus of S of F P n minus A. Now the Cauchy criterion says that this can be made arbitrarily small and as A is the limit of S of F P n we can know that this can also be made arbitrarily small and because of this we can make the sum of these two things arbitrarily small we can make this less than epsilon. Now choosing the exact delta of epsilon for which this will work is a little bit tedious but you have seen this process so many times that I am sure you can do it on your own. So I will leave that as a homework. Also these are pn dot stacked partitions. Now we will see another form of the Cauchy criterion which is sometimes easier to use. This is called as the squeeze theorem. Okay. So the squeeze theorem states that if f let f be a function from a b to r. Okay then f belongs to r a b if and only if for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists two functions alpha epsilon and omega epsilon from a b to r such that they both are Riemann integrable okay moreover alpha epsilon of x is less than or equal to f of x is less than or equal to omega epsilon of x for all x in a b and finally integral of omega epsilon minus alpha epsilon from a to b is less than epsilon. Even in this case one side of the proof is quite easy. This is the case that if f is integrable then we have two functions alpha epsilon and omega epsilon that satisfies all these conditions. What are these functions? Alpha epsilon of x is equal to f of x is equal to omega epsilon of x. Then clearly uh, uh, f of x is less than or equal to f of x is less than or equal to f of x. So because of this we have this condition satisfied. And because omega epsilon of x is equal to alpha epsilon of x for all x, we know that this quantity is 0. So integral a to b of 0 is 0. Hence we have this condition also satisfied. So because of this one side is trivial in this case. Now let us see how we can prove the other way implication. At this point pause the video and go back to the video where you saw that if f of x is less than or equal to g of x for every x in a b then integral a to b of f is less than or equal to integral a to b of g because the proof that proof of this implication is very similar to that proof. So always keep that in your mind. Okay. Now because alpha epsilon and omega epsilon are integrable we know that for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a delta of epsilon which is also greater than 0 such that if norm of p dot is less than delta then modulus of s of alpha epsilon p dot minus integral a to b of alpha of epsilon 
is less than epsilon and modulus of s of omega epsilon p dot minus integral a to b of omega epsilon is also less than epsilon. Now from these inequalities we know that integral a to b of alpha epsilon minus epsilon is less than s of alpha epsilon comma p which will be less than or equal to s of f p dot which will be less than or equal to s of omega epsilon p dot which by this inequality is less than or equal to integral from a to b of omega epsilon plus epsilon. Now this is true for any tagged partition. So if q dot was another tagged partition that will also satisfy the same inequality. Okay. So because of this if you now look at modulus of s of f p dot minus s of f q dot see both s of f p dot and s of q dot lies between integral a to b of alpha epsilon minus epsilon and integral a, a to b omega epsilon plus epsilon so because of this the difference between the the difference between these two will be less than or equal to integral a to b of omega epsilon minus alpha epsilon plus 2 epsilon Okay, but integral a to b of omega epsilon minus alpha epsilon is less than epsilon. So this quantity is less than 3 epsilon. But as epsilon was arbitrary, we get the Cauchy criterion and that implies that f belongs to RAB.